Hello, everybody. Good morning. <clears throat> if you hear lots of noise in the background, I have all the windows open and I have a fan going. It is warmish here in Portland, but not so warm that we need to have the air on just as of yet. So we have um, the windows in the house open to get some fresh air in the house. Just FYI. <laughs> so you may hear the occasional noise from outside or you may hear the little motor from the fan or that particular squeak was my chair because I kind of need a new chair. <laughs> Anyway, good morning. Um, I have my desk is a mess again. Like that's just going to be a thing for right now. I've got projects all over my table, lots of things to do. So I do think mostly we're going to do stitching today because I have lots of that to do. Um, this is the little doll that I made last night. I shared the um, channel that I saw the video on which is Dim Life, capital D-I-N, capital L-I-F-E. Um, and um, she had a video on making a little doll literally out of scraps. And so I thought that was just such a cute idea. I haven't made a doll in a long time. And I thought, okay, let me make one. And so she's really cute. I, I really am pleased with her. And this is just all scraps that were on my table. I didn't go grab anything. Good morning now. Um, and so um, as I was watching her video about the doll, I noticed she had this little like fabric little basket off to the side where she kept all of her fabric little small tiny scraps in that she was using to stuff like the doll head and stuff. And um, I got the idea for saving my little tiny fabric scraps for using as stuffing from some of the costumers here on YouTuber, uh, YouTubers here on YouTube. I really have had all my coffee, I swear. Um, so there's a bunch of costuming channels and sewing channels here on YouTube, and they usually save their scraps um, and call it, they call it cabbage. And they use it when they're making like bum pads and stuff like that. They use the, the cabbage as stuffing. And I have known that for a while. And it just kind of dawned on me recently when I was working on some other things, for instance, like pin cushions that, you know, hey, I could use that cabbage as stuffing for things like that. So um, when I was making this doll, I used the cabbage for the head and I thought, you know, my little jar of cabbage is like literally it explodes when you take the lid off. And so I thought one of those little fabric baskets she's got sitting in the corner of her table um, would be a good idea to put my cabbage in. It would be easier to get it in and out of than the jar. So I'm going to make myself one. This is my jar of the little... <laughs> Are you ready of my fabric scraps? So when my scraps get to be too small to use or their fabrics, I really don't enjoy using. Like there's some in here I made it out of masks. I cut them into little teeny tiny small pieces. I've been stuffing them in this gelato jar. Um, good morning, Bronwyn, Kristen, and Barbara. I don't have my glasses on yet, so I hope I got the names right. So yeah, that's, it's not exploding yet, but give it a minute and it just kind of expands. If you were here, you could kind of see it moving. Now that the lid's off, it's like one of those expanding foam beds. So it doesn't seem to ever look smaller than that. So we're going to make one of these little jars. I mean, baskets to put it in because, yeah. So I've got two pieces of cotton here, thicker cotton. This is um, duck cloth. And... It could be any size that you want, but my pieces happen to be about, I guess I should put my glasses on now, about nine and a half by 12, about 18-ish. Good morning, Lisa. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is get two pieces of rectangles of fabric. And when you're figuring out what size, again, mine are about nine and a half by 18. Maybe you want yours to be smaller. So you want to kind of play with your rectangle and decide, you know, maybe you want it to just be half the size. You know, maybe you want your finished little basket to be about that size. 
So then you would want to double the length. And I would add like a maybe an inch. And then you want to measure the width and add about a, um, half an inch or so. Hey, Kathy. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold this one in half. We'll do one at a time. I've got some quilting thread. Oh, I'm sorry, button and craft thread. Use a strong thread, but use one that's not expensive. Uh, get a needle with nothing on it. I'm gonna use double strands of thread. You could do this on the machine. Those of you that machine sew know that. You can totally, I'm off camera. Okay, here we go. How's that? You know, I should know that, but you know, again, I feel like I haven't had any coffee today. Yesterday I felt like I was, you know, needing to go back to bed. Hang on one second. If I make you guys dizzy, close your eyes for a minute. <laughs> Okay, that's a little bit better. Well, not really, hold on. Oops. So we're making a little fabric basket to hold some of my um, scrap cabbage that I've been using to stuff little projects that I've been making, like the doll that I made yesterday. I used some of the cabbage in her head. I also made an owl recently, a little owl pin cushion thing. Hold on. So this is another project I used the cabbage in. And again, this is all hand stitched and it's just made out of scraps. And it's a pin cushion. And this was um, inspired by a video on the channel, Handy Mum Lynn. Okay, so what we're gonna do is you're gonna, you're gonna stitch down. So here's the fold of our rectangle. So you're gonna stitch down both sides. Leave the top open for the moment. Just do a running stitch. I am saying cabbage. So the um, costuming channels call it the leftover scraps after a project. They call it cabbage. And sometimes they cut their cabbage up really tiny like this. And they use it as stuffing for projects. And it just kind of stuck with me, the term. So yeah, cabbage, like the vegetable. So I'm just doing a running stitch. It does look like coleslaw, doesn't it? <laughs> and you know, for the most part, if unless you have very thin white fabric, the fabric scraps are great stuffing. And you know, it's things like that that, you know, I didn't really, I don't know, they just didn't dawn on me before this whole apocalypse thing happened. And then suddenly you can't get out to just go easily buy stuffing for a project. So you're like, what do I have that I can use? My grandmother would be laughing and going, yeah, of course you can use fabric scraps. Like, you know, our grandmothers, of course that's what they did. They used what they had. They didn't go out and just buy stuff all the time. So what you want to do is you want to sew down both sides. And then once you have both sides sewn, you're going to flatten the corner, which is going to be hard to see because I haven't sewn this yet. And you're going to sew across here to make the bottom flat. Yeah, I so... <clears throat> You know, I've told you all recently, be, 
I've started purging again and getting rid of the things that aren't making me happy. And I'm not a fan of junk journaling. I've also discovered that while I do save paper, uh, fabric scraps, and I have for a long time, by the way, these are the bigger fabric scraps <laughs> that I have to kind of go through. Um, <clears throat> I've never saved paper scraps. Like I don't, that doesn't make me happy. And I have absolutely no use for them. That being said, the little corners, if you did things like shaker cards, you could use the little um, hole punches or the corners that you cut off um, instead of confetti. But I have, you know, like the rest of you, I come across things, you know, for those that don't know, we moved about two years ago. And I thought I did a pretty good job of purging before we moved, but I'm still finding things that I'm, I just look at myself at the mirror in the mirror frequently and go, why, why, just why, why do you still have this? Why did you move it? Why did you pay to have someone pack it? And it's not just art stuff. It's other stuff too, but still. So shaker cards don't make you happy, Barb, then there's no reason to save those. Just get rid of them. But if you do make shaker cards, you know, those little hole punches from your hole punch thing or, you know, the cut off corners, those could be used in something like a shaker card. But in my opinion, I mean, I do make the occasional shaker paper clip or, you know, that kind of thing a tag. But I if I need like little bits of paper or confetti, I'll just get out one of my hole punches and make some out of paper. Cause it's not like I didn't get rid of all my paper, but you know, I don't need to keep tons of stuff around. So this is a little thicker um, fabric because this is duck cloth and it's so hard to do more than a couple of stitches. And these stitches are probably a little bit big. You probably could do them a little smaller, but that's okay. Okay, got one done. So now I'm gonna tie off this end. Again, use a thicker thread. Don't use, you know, regular sewing thread. I would use buttonhole twist or quilting thread or something like that because you're pulling on it a lot because of the kind of fabric that it is and the other thread's probably gonna break. Let's see. Hey, Sue. Hi, Linda. Yeah, I don't, you know, once I was no longer in the artist cooperative gift shop in San Jose, I had no reason to do some things like cards and Christmas ornaments. And, you know, I used to do paperclip angels and all of that stuff. And I just, there is no need for me to do any of that anymore. It doesn't make me happy. I'm not in a place where I'm selling arts and crafts where you need to make stuff that, you know, is going to sell for the customers that they want to see. And, you know, sometimes, Sue, I feel that way about my daily drawings. If you all follow me on social media, you know, I do daily drawings. It's so funny how many of you all like the cat because I thought the cat was kind of bad. My husband even liked the cat. <laughs> I was like, really? And the face the day before that, <laughs> I didn't like that one either. I think we're, we're our own worst critics. But I post even the stuff I don't like because I just want to show you guys, you know, art's not about being perfect. It's just about creating and, you know, the joy of exploring. And, you know, even when it doesn't turn out the way you want it to, the process is fun.
And yeah, that's the other thing I would do with them, Barb, is I would just take a bunch of little scraps like that and just dump them on a collage page, uh, on a journal page and do some sort of journal or collage on top of it. In fact, I, that's how I did the page yesterday for Mike Deacon's Mission Inspiration. That was the background was already there. I just added the airplane and the quote and a few painty marks. Okay, so once you have your sides sewn, you would flatten this like this and line up your stitches with the bottom of the bag, the fold, and you would flatten it like that and then sew across here. And then of course do the other one because I want to have it double lined, so. Pins, 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 pins. So you want to pull it out, line up that fold. I kind of finger pressed it so I can see where that line is. And then I'm going to just pin it so I don't have to do it again. Before we sew that, we'll do the other one. Yeah, so I know what Barbara's talking about because I did, I have this journal that's out all the time. This is an old moleskin uh, planner, weekly notebook. I actually like working in this rather than something with fancier art paper. Um, but I will just wipe brushes off in here. Um, this page I did yesterday. Um, there's paper here in the background that and tape and stuff that was already there because I just had leftovers on the table and I just glued them down like probably eight months ago or longer so if you don't, you don't have the heart to throw things away you know grab one of your journals and just paste all that stuff down on a page you don't have to do anything with it right now um you can come back to it later, but it's already a pre-prepped background for a, a later project. Is anybody else just kind of feeling like discombobulated or is it just, just us over here? Yeah, they're a great jumping off part, a point. Um, and sometimes you just want to just do that and you don't want to really do anything else. And you just want to, you know, turn the music up, turn the devices off, get out those scraps of paper that are laying all over your desk that you need to clean up and do something with. And just start gluing stuff down. Uh, maybe you just finished a project and you've got wet, dirty paintbrushes instead of cleaning them off and putting the paint down the sink, um, just wipe them off on a brush and then stick them in the water. <laughs> so yeah, I'm glad it's not just me, Linda, because we're kind of feeling, especially we've noticed like on Mondays, it's just our blah. Like both of us are like, oh, I just want to go back to bed. I mean, sometimes we just, we leave the house and we just go on a ride in the car, even if it's just for an hour and we don't really have any errands to run and we don't have really have anywhere to go. We just go drive around. <laughs> we don't, you know, we never, we don't even get out of the car. Sometimes we'll go through a drive through for a cup of coffee, but. And this side, by the way, of the fabric is a little harder to stitch because the selvage is here. It's a little thicker than the other side. So you will notice on fabric like this duck cloth, you may want to cut the selvage off because you may find it's just too hard for you to stitch through. It is a little hard on your thumb. I should probably have a thimble on, but you know, I don't always do what I should. Yeah, back in the day when I was younger, I was diagnosed with high blood pressure when I turned 40. 
And the doctor, of course, you know, went over, you know, what are you doing? What are you eating? What are you drinking? Well, in those days, I was drinking like an entire pot or two of coffee by myself. <laughs> and he said, well, that's the first thing you have to cut back on. <laughs> and the problem with right now is, uh, you know, old habits never die. And I'm just so tempted to go back to drinking a lot more coffee than I should. I know I take medication now, but you know, I agree, Kathy. I think the situation is starting to weigh on everyone. And, uh, you know, the arguments are getting ridiculous. And I just, I want to stay informed, but I just can't. I just can't sometimes. I can't do the, can't do the stupid anymore. So the only trick to doing a bag like this is when you do the corners, you wanna make sure you do them all the same. <laughs> so to that end, you probably wanna measure from the, this tip into where you start stitching. And you probably wanna pre-mark it with pencil or something so that they're all the same and you don't end up with a bag that's kind of wonky. Um, I've used to do tote bags for the um, gift shop I was in, shopping bags um, with the shop's name on them. And I, this is how I did them on machine, of course, not hand stitching. I think that's a great thing, Linda, is to just, just unplug. I turned off my notifications for things a long time ago because of work. And I never turned them back on, although I don't do that job anymore. And I can't say that's a bad thing because my stuff would be dinging all the time and that would drive me crazy. And there are times when I'm up here in the art room and I have music on and that music is not coming out of the computer and I am just stitching and the computer may be on, but my back is to it right now. I'm, I'm looking at your chat on, um, I'm looking at your chat on uh, my iPad. My back is to the computer when I'm here stitching at the table. I didn't get any, I didn't get the spinning wheel of death. Kathy did, am I back now? All right, one more. You of course can do this on your machine. Like I said, it would be much quicker to do it on the machine and just sew these sides on the machine. But you know, there's just something about, again, it's not unlike the computer thing. There's something about just sitting with a needle and thread Turn, turn your favorite music on. Fun fact, my favorite music, although I like all kinds of music, um, especially right now, my favorite playlist is Andrea Bocelli. I also like um, church hymns and um, opera, Celtic music. I like all kinds of music. But yeah, when I'm stressed out, those are the ones I go go for. I'm scared to death of online school. My daughter is eight. And I'm, oh boy, Bronwyn, I'm sorry. All you parents who suddenly have to figure all of that out, that's just really tough. And then you have the people who are making it more difficult for everybody by not minding the rules, which doesn't help. And I don't even have school-age kids anymore, and I get annoyed So again, as I said, you, sh you can do these stitches smaller. You can do it on machine. I'm, I'm kind of doing big stitches. I call myself the lazy crafter. I'm not the frugal crafter. That's Lindsay Wyrick. I'm the lazy crafter. Been saying that since the day one on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, we have tickets for a KISS concert which was supposed to be next month, but of course, because of everything, it's been rescheduled to next year. Um, I like rock and roll. I like 
you know, some uh, rap music. I like, I like all kinds of music. I love pink when I'm, when I'm feeling feisty, I'll, I'll put pink on, dance around the art room. I sing, I sing to the music too, although I would never put that on camera because I'll make your ears bleed. <laughs> I do not have a singing voice. Yeah, I have to say that, you know, I give all of you parents out there of school age kids props because I don't know in light of the given situation how well I would handle things. I mean, we didn't have COVID when Rebecca was little and I was still that mom that didn't want to let her out of the house and wrap, wanted to wrap her in bubble wrap before she left. Oh, Bruce Springsteen. Yep. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing to this one. We're going to pull the corner out, kind of try to line it up with the fold. I'm going to kind of eyeball. They sing on. Oh boy, yeah, I would make your ears bleed. It's just not, it's not a pretty sight. But, uh, you know, lately I've been known to, we're in the car and a, a song comes on. And yeah, I start singing. Husband kind of gives me the side eye, but you know, all of you who are married, y'all know about the side eye. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> Okay, let's see how good I got at this. So this one is about inch and a half, inch and a half. Let's see. I usually edit the singing out of the vlog. There is usually singing in the footage somewhere, but. Okay, so I did pin them all in about the same place. So now what I want to do is I want to stitch this side of the pins, I want to just stitch straight across. I should probably put a pencil line. I'm not going to, but I would recommend that you draw kind of a straight line, a guide for yourself. I just want to show you guys how you can make some cute sort of handmade um, tools, accessories for your creative space. This pin cushion I made, I needed a pin cushion for some more. Actually, I need another pin cushion. So if we have time this morning, I'm gonna need to make another pin cushion. Um, but you don't have to um, buy stuff. Again, just use what you have. You, we can't really get out to get stuff anyway right now. And this too was made with scraps, by the way. One thing when you're working with this buttonhole twist or quilting cotton, make sure you pull your knots tight because they sometimes don't want to pull tight and then it comes out. So yeah, so you, there's no reason you, I mean, I would probably recommend you put a line, but when you do that, then you have a flat bottom. When you do this corner, you have a flat bottom to your bag. We'll do the other one and I'll turn it the other way and I'll show you. This little owl, I know he probably looks more complicated to some of you. He was not complicated. He was actually very easy. He's made up of some triangles and then I put a, um, hexagon at the bottom, but he's actually very easy. Um, the video for that is on the channel Handy Mom Lynn. I don't remember the name of the video. Uh, neither of these channels that I found to do um, talking videos, they're all videos with music, um, which is fine. I can get the idea. 
we will probably be alternating these stitching videos with some journaling and watercoloring videos. Um, I actually have a, bu a bunch more stitching stuff to do than I do journaling stuff to do, but there's both projects. I love my little owl and you totally could stick pins in him and, and use him as a pin. The idea was to use him as a pin cushion, but he just sits in the window. I actually have a little bird over there and I've got a strawberry that I made. I had the feathers in um, my small bits bank. The fabric scraps were out of the, one of the fabric scrap, you know, buckets I have here on the table. I've got a million buttons. Yeah, he's cute. Yeah, so I'm that person who can't carry a tune, who sings in the car when the windows are rolled up, nobody can hear me, except sometimes the husband. But yeah, I, I really can't carry a tune, which is funny because I got into choir at in elementary school. I'm not sure why exactly the teacher let me into choir, but. And I have an aunt who sings opera, but I didn't inherit that talent. There we go. So now we got to the other side, so I'm gonna tie it off again. You could totally just do one of these, but I'm going to line the bag, so I'm going to do two of them. But once you get it stitched, it is no longer a flat piece of fabric. You push out the corners. You can hear the birds outside. Well, I can. I don't know if you guys can. Look at that. So we're going to do the other one. They don't care. We seem to. Thanks, Barbara. And yeah, I, my sister's part of some groups like that. And funny enough, when I'm with her women's groups, uh, I do sing. As a <laughs> I also share things in public with their, with the group, well, not public, public, but with their group that I don't normally put out there to the world. So, which is interesting. I think those, you know, kind of groups are good therapy. All right. So now we're going to do the other one. And like with the little owl, you of course could have these little bags and accessories be plain like this one is. You could make them out of some favorite fabric. If you're gonna make it out of a thinner cotton, um, I would maybe put um, interfacing or something in between the layers to make it stiffer so it stands up. Um, but duck cloth comes in a lot of different patterns and colors. And I know like at Joann's in the back of the store near the upholstery fabrics is where they have the duck cloth and they have like at least one whole aisle of just duck cloth in different colors. Yeah, Barbara, I, I, I find that that's true with those groups. When I'm with my sisters, my sister and her group, um, I don't know, you just find the right place and the right thing comes out at the right time. That's, I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, okay, hold on. This is a lot of fabric right here. Ow! Poke myself. Blood on the work is a no-no. <laughs> that being said, I keep tied to go sticks on the desk here. because I have gotten blood on the work before. 
it's a thing. Exactly, Kristen, exactly. You can totally have this out on your table and you can leave it empty for a while. You can just clean your brushes on it. You can stencil on it. I would, if you're gonna put acrylic paint on this, I would do that after you stitch the bag because acrylic paint can be really difficult to stitch through. And the duck cloth is already hard to stitch through. That being said, if you did make it out of a planar fabric, like a cotton quilting fabric, if you did make the bag and then put some paint on it, the paint is gonna stiffen the bag and help it stand up. Okay, so now we have two of these, so we can put one inside the other bag. Line up the bottom, line up the sides. Okay, I'm gonna turn the top edge in a bit. And pin it, always pinning before sewing so that you can make sure that you have everything in the right place and that it's even. It's easier to adjust the pins than it is have to rip out your work. Any of you who have sewn before, especially garment making, know exactly what I'm talking about. Any like loose little bits of thread, you can just tuck in. Now you don't have to tuck the edges in. You can totally leave them um, raw. I kind of want it to be tucked in, so. This side in a little bit more because I think it's uneven. Let's, I'll get it pinned first and then I'll see. You can be thinking about, you know, what else do you have laying around your art room in the way of trims? Because you can totally trim this out with some lace. I've got a bunch of antique lace and stuff here on the table. most of which is inherited from my grandmother and other people who I know who have passed away. I think that's pretty even. What do you think? Seam ripper is always your friend, but if you can avoid using it, it's a great thing. <laughs> so now that I think I have that sort of even, now I'm gonna stitch that together. So then my thought to myself is, do I care if the stitches show? Or do I want to do a blind blind stitch? I don't care if they show, but I do think I'm going to cut a longer piece of thread. You could use, definitely use binding. Um, you could get it basted or stitched together and then go around the top with some embroidery stitches. Um, you can use lace, ribbon. I have a bunch of, I have some of this kind of trim that's like flowers, but it's, they're all like hooked together. Like you could put something like that around the edge. You could put seam tape. Just because it's not intended for that purpose doesn't mean you can't use it for that. Oh, thanks, Peg. Hey, how are you? Holy cow. I was thinking about you this morning. All right, so I don't think I care if my stitches show, but that being said, I think if I can hide the knots, I will. So I'm gonna start my stitches from the inside so that the knot is between the layers and then tuck the ends down.
Yeah, I've been watching your videos. I'm not, you know, I know I'm not commenting too much, but I know you have enough things to worry about. You don't need to be answering a million YouTube or Facebook comments or anything. And I'm, you know, that is so great that your kids are helping out. I saw the picture of your son fixing the roof at your, was it your daughter's house? So I'm going to just do a running stitch around the edge. Yeah, I showed the video to Bob and he was just, I think all he said was, oh my God, my sister, I have a sister who lives in Clinton, Iowa. And I'm not sure how hard they were hit because we don't speak, but I do know they did get hit by it too. Oh, good. Yeah. Generator, you know, that's been on my wish list for a long time. I think no matter where you live in the country, there's always some kind of natural disaster that could happen. And you don't realize how much you might need one of those, something like that until it does happen. Is Shell going to be um, doing the live by herself again this week because you have no power? And yeah, I'm with Linda. We're just glad you're safe. Uh, Lisa is near the fires in California, I think. Yeah, I, I've wanted one for a long time. We should have honestly had one when we still lived in California because we our power went out on a regular basis, if not from an earthquake, from one of the rolling blackouts and things like they're doing right now. And it was usually out for at, at least a day. If not longer. At that time, we had a wood-burning fireplace and cooked many a meal inside the fireplace because that was all we could do. Okay, if you're sewing a project and it's really thick fabric and you have to like do this or grab your pliers to pull the needle through, don't feel bad because I do that all the time. The stitches don't have to be neat and even. I keep telling y'all it's not about perfection. It's just about having fun creating things for your self, your space, your friends. Having fun with the creative process, whether it's paint and paper, fabric and needle and thread, it doesn't matter. I have discovered during this whole situation, worldwide situation, that I'm just discovering the things I don't love, things I don't, you know, I've tried and I'm not keen on. I'm just getting rid of them and I'm just getting into and getting back to the things I do love making and doing. It would be great to see you on Thursday, Peg. Just be ready for a flood of questions about how you're doing. So if you have a situation like this, <clears throat> where it looks like this fabric is bigger than this one, <clears throat> just pull it taut. Give it a pull as you're stitching. It will even out the layers and you won't have that space there with a tuck in it.
Oh, Kathy, that's horrible. Yeah, we really should, probably should have one here at the this new house. We don't yet, but it's kind of on my wish list still. Once you have this top edge stitched, again, you can just leave it. You could add some trim to the edge. Um, if you add trim to it, you can use these stitches as the anchor points rather than going through all the layers of fabric again. Oh man, I'm sorry, Peg. It's the last thing you guys needed right now. But I'm glad you and yours, your children, your husband, yourself, you're all safe. Okay, right here there's a lot of fabric, so let's use the table. And try not to get blood on the project. You don't think I use pliers to pull my needle through? Ha, yes, I do. <laughs> and one more time. So I'm going to come up in between the layers. I'm going to tie my knot. And then I'm going to go back down between the layers with the needle and I'm going to come out like down here. I'm going to pull this. I'm going to pull it just a little bit tight and then I'm going to cut it. And then when I, I let it go, that little tail end of thread gets hidden between the layers of fabric. And I want to just fold this down just a little bit. Now you could make these and you don't have to make them for fabric scraps. You could totally put pens and pencils in here, paint brushes, whatever, you know, you choose. But of course I'm gonna dump out my cabbage, which I bet you fills up this whole thing because I have a lot of cabbage right now. Believe me, it was hard to get the jar. See, look, what did I tell you? It's hard to get the lid on the jar. Yes, you could do a, a, um, a cord on it. You could put little handles on the bag. You could do a little handle. Um, but, you know, making these little homemade things for your art room, you know, it's a good thing. And, you know, I like them better than going out and buying the store-bought stuff. Don't tell Bob. Then I won't have any excuse to go shopping. <laughs> Okay, so now I have all of this and I kind of need another pin cushion. But I detest some of these fabric scraps. I used them to make masks, but that being said, I have this gray piece. I've got a few of these. But it would be so much easier Yeah, it's kind of like the internet right now, Peg. I keep expecting that, um, you know, with the internet at some point, you know, when we have iffy connection, I'm kind of not, you know, I'm not ever surprised because the whole world is on the internet right now. But right now for you guys, you have the whole area using, you know, the couple of cell towers that you have. It's no wonder the phone connections are wonky. 
see, but do I want to piece all these strips together or do I want to just use a piece of fabric and, you know, maybe I don't want to, hmm. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I have been doing. I've been making perch piles or cutting it up for cabbage and making scrap bags. And there is a lot of this in here that may, I might just take this whole bundle and put it in a scrap bag in the Etsy shop. Um, there is a few, I love this fabric, which I, I can't find more of right now, but I love that particular fabric. Um, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of that that might go in a scrap bag. But I, ha I need another pin cushion. I found this because, <laughs> you know, I don't have enough pins. So, and I am not the kind of person that likes to have my pins in a box because then I just jab myself and hello again, get blood on the project. So um, this doesn't work for me. So I need to make another pin cushion. Thanks, Peg. Yeah, I'm, you know, really enjoying um, getting back into sewing a lot. And I'm also enjoying taking some of the prompts. Uh, you know, I'm kind of toying with the idea of taking some of the prompts from some of the art groups and rethinking them in a sewing project, not in a art journal page. Like the whole idea of doing prompts um, from either AJOS or Mission Inspiration and taking the prompts and doing them as a sewing project, do it, you know, taking it outside the box. That's an interesting idea to me. But I need to make a pincushion for these. So let me grab a piece of fabric. Let's see. Do I have anything on the table I want to use or can use? Maybe. I have some fat quarters on the table. I have this one. I like this gray. I kind of like this one. Oop. Let's see if I can grab it without everything coming out. So this is a fat quarter. A fat quarter is a half of a half of a yard. It's usually somewhere around 18 by 22 inches. For those that don't know. Ooh, Peg, oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, it's not my, I could never be in the medical field. Well, I mean, I could, I could if you make me, <laughs> but it wouldn't be my favorite job. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is cut a circle. So to do that, I'm gonna fold the fabric sort of like this. I'm gonna cut kind of a big circle. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle, people. So, and it's probably not going to be because I am not Einstein. They say if you can draw a perfect circle, it means you're a genius. Trust me, that is not me. Okay, so I just did that. You know, old school, like paper piecing your circle, right? I'm pretty sure it's an oval. Oh, well, it's circly. You want it kind of big because first of all, these pins are huge and there's a lot of them, um, but you're gonna wrap it up and you're gonna stuff it with fabric. Now it doesn't have to be this big. You might wanna play with you know, the size of circle that you have. It's a great way to get rid of some of the cabbage um, and or you need a lot of stuffing. But I have a tendency and have for a while now to just make my own pin cushions. This is this will be my fourth one that's actually in use with pins in it that's in here in the art room. I can't remember the last time I bought a pin cushion. Yep, stay safe, you too, Peg. We'll look for you on Thursday. Hopefully you get power and can make it. If you need anything, you let one of us know, Peg. 
So then just go around the edge again with a running stitch, a big running stitch, because we're going to just gather it. We're going to pull it tight like that. I usually make my pin cushions out of my lesser favorite scraps. Um, or I should say out of scraps or lesser liked fabrics. I actually like this fabric, but um, I happen to have a lot of fabric right now, so it's all right. So you see when you gather it, look how it's going to be about. I have another one. I think this is going to be about the same size as the other one that's sitting in the windowsill. Yeah, I was um, I'm just dumbstruck by everything that's happening. It's like things aren't bad enough. Then you have the storm damage in Iowa and murder hornets in Washington and earthquakes. And, you know, I got to stop joking around about waiting for the four horsemen because now at this point, I think they're around the corner. Somebody's got their drill or something going. I can hear it. So just keep pulling it. As you're pulling it, it's gathering up. Uh, pin cushions are a great way to get your hand into hand sewing. And they're easy. They're very forgiving. There's really no wrong way. And just making a simple round one, you don't, it doesn't have to look like anything. And this one is made out of scraps. You can see where I pieced this different scraps together. I did do the piecing on the sewing machine and then I made the pin cushion, the rest of it by hand. Yeah, I saw, I also saw the fire tornadoes. I still have lots of friends and family in the San Francisco Bay area. And um, yeah, every time I have something that happens, they, I message them and they also message us because I live South for those that don't know, I live South of Portland. It's probably enough said. <laughs> uh, the upcoming uh, vlog on tomorrow morning um, has some footage of, a drive um, near the downtown area. We didn't know where the federal building was, so we didn't go there. Not that we would have gone anyway, but um, we did get, I don't know, close-ish. I am having a great thought for what the stuffing is gonna be for this. Ha, I just had a thought. We may put some cabbage in, but I have a, something else that needs to be used up that I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with it. And I'm just like, Okay, so look how big this is. So the thing is, if you make your pincushion too big, it's all right. Just cut it, take the stitches out. But I think this is going to be good. It's going to be a big pincushion like the one I have in the window, but that's going to work. Now, if you want a normal size pincushion, you probably don't want to cut a circle that big. Um, I had to get a new ironing board cover recently, and the new ironing board cover came with its own pad. And so the old pad for the old cover, I didn't know what to do with it, but it was like a nice kind of batting fabric. We're going to tear it up and we're going to stick it inside of here. Hang on. Let me go get it out of the closet. I got to walk all the way around because of the cords and cables. And it happens to be gray. So I didn't know what to do with it. It's not something I would use as a slow stitching base because I don't really care for how it feels because it's definitely not cotton. Um, and I'm going to get out my gingers. 
which are sh super sharp. And this is how I cut up the cabbage too when I cut up the fabric scraps for cabbage. I usually, of course, if I'm doing the fabric scraps, I usually cut them smaller, but. Yeah, I, Linda, I miss Daiso. <laughs> if you're from the San Francisco Bay Area, you have the Japanese dollar store Daiso. Um, in San Jose, we had a really great um, sort of gourmet custom burger place called The Counter. I think there's a few of them around the San Francisco Bay Area. And literally when you go in, you pick the meat you want, you pick the bun you want, you pick the toppings that you want. Like, And I think there's like over 300 or 600 or something ways you can get your hamburger. Veggie options, meat lover options. It's like the best place. We were just hunting around for someplace like that up here when, of course, the world went sideways. So this is a great way to use up something like this that, you know, there's nothing wrong with it, but I just, I have no use for it, but it would make great pincushion stuffing. You want your pincushion to like be sort of tightly stuffed. And doing projects like this is a nice break from having to figure out a journal page or you know, making tags or. I'll do a few sewing projects, then I'll do an art journal page, then I'll go slap some paint on a canvas. Yeah, so the hedgehog is one that I've been looking at. There's a there's patterns on the inter internet for hedgehog pincushions. I'm kind of liking making my own. When I make the creatures like the owl, I tend to just make them because they're cute and not actually put pins in it. But uh, I, I, I kind of want to make a hedgehog. I've got a, I got the bird and the strawberry and the owl. The bird I bought, and it's actually a pin cushion and tape measure thing. So then you just keep cutting it up, and as you're cutting it up, I haven't taken the needle off yet. And even if you have batting at home that you can put in here, like I have some, this is a little bag that I have at the table. That doesn't mean you wanna use it all on one project, especially if you can't easily get out and get more of it. So now, so this is a good part of the chat, chit chat that we can do. And I want you guys to feel free to ask these questions on my channel, when, especially when we do these lives. So for me, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know I'm constantly purging and churning my art room, changing things around, um, switching from stitching to journaling to painting to watercolor. That churning is part of my creative process. When I am not feeling it, then I will do the purging and churning. And that usually sparks inspiration for me. Um, oh, okay. Well, I'll see if I can, Bronwyn, I'll see if I can download a pattern. Um, Aunt Beck, if you have a good one that you've used, if you made yours, um, send me a DM. Um, anyway, the churning and purging process is, that's part of my creative process. So I don't consider the purging of supplies or even like the purging of stuff in the kitchen, which I have to do, um, um, to be non-creative. I look at that as part of my process. It's not just actually putting stuff on paper or actually creating something with a needle and thread. So first of all, stop beating yourself up because that's, that's, I'm, I'm going to get on you about that. Don't do that. Um, and if you're like me, you need to do something because it's not, I, it even says in my medical chart that I deal with my anxiety with art. My doctor actually wrote it in my medical chart. 
Um, and I really have to have my words and my voice and my conversation as well as my art be part of my process. Otherwise I'd be medicated. Just that's, I'm just putting it out there. And there's no shame in that. And there's nothing wrong with that. And some, we all have slumps. There's also nothing wrong with that. But if we can help you get past the slump by encouraging you to just, you know, just turn your supplies. You don't have to get rid of anything, but maybe it's time to rearrange that closet. And maybe that'll spark some creativity for you. Maybe it's time to clean out that, you know, bin of yarn <clears throat> of which I have two downstairs. <laughs> but look at this already. It's already getting full. So this is perfect. We can definitely do a hedgehog. I am noticing on these lives that you guys are enjoying and I'm getting more views on the stitching than I am on the watercolor and painting ones. So just FYI. <laughs> so we will probably do more stitching than we and conversation than we will do painting. Um, so hopefully you guys are okay with that. Yeah, now, so, you know, and the other thing with this whole worldwide situation, and Barbara knows this because she's in a Facebook chat with me with some other people, is, <laughs> is um, that, you know, we can't get out and get supplies. And I do slow stitching, but I don't make garments anymore. So sometimes I just want to renew and refresh my stash of fabrics and my fabric scraps. So that's why sometimes I take like this and stuff it in a bag and I'll sell it. But at the same time, I'll look for somebody else online who is a friend or somebody in Etsy that I can buy um, different scraps from to just refresh and turn over. Sometimes I'm looking for, you know, embroidery floss or something like that. And I will, you know, ask my friends, you know, do you have any, um, can we trade? We check with each other when we're short on supplies. And conversations with my muse, and it's so funny. I think there's still a number of people out there that think I just make that up. <laughs> so just so y'all know, she really is like an extra person in my head, but please don't tell the doctors that because they might put me in the hospital. <laughs> yeah, so going through the books is a great thing. You know, when you're in a slump and you're just not feeling it, going through the books, um, maybe taking a new class if there's a cheap free one out there somewhere. Sometimes just going through your old artwork. If you're like me, you have a, I have a room with bookshelves full of journals and stuff in it. And sometimes I just sit in there and I just flip through journals and it'll spark something. Um, you just never know. But yeah, don't think you just have to sit at your desk and then you just stare at the paper or fabric that's on the desk and you feel lost because it's not just about that. Yeah, thanks, Kathy. Because, you know, I might get locked up in a straitjacket if somebody finds out the truth. I always sit down on Mondays and I write, the, I write all that on Monday. Um, I never know what I'm going to write when I sit down at the computer and I just start writing what I'm thinking in my head and that's what comes out and what you see. So the other secret you should know is I've saved every single one since the uh, beginning of writing the conversations with my muse. At some point, I'm going to put them all together in print somewhere. I don't know if it's a book I'll put on Amazon or... I don't know. Um, and just so that you know, um, I am a published author. I do already have a book on Amazon. So that wouldn't be beyond me to do that. But um, I don't know. I don't know if anybody would buy it. Okay, great. Thank you, Aunt Beck. Because, you know, I've got a room full. Of, despite purging, I have a room full of art stuff. I bet I have all the stuff to do a hedgehog. Because, you know. Yeah, this stuff is very, so this is the heat resistant kind of batting. It's not the same thing as cotton batting and it's a little bit scratchy. So that's why I'm okay with cutting this up and um, not 
saving it for stitching backgrounds, even though I'm kind of intrigued by the gray color because um, I don't really like the feel of it. Look at that, holy cow. So you just keep stuffing your pincushion. Yeah, I can definitely get this whole thing in here. Um, I don't think this is this is an ironing board. It's the the matting underneath an ironing board cover. An old one. I had to buy a new one because I totally demolished the old one. Like it was patched and it had, yeah. It, I just, let's just say I demolished the old one. I have the fabric downstairs and I will probably, the fabric is, you know, distressed. So we'll probably do something with the fabric. It was a muslin ironing board cover and this mat that was underneath it was separate from the cover. So I didn't have to take anything apart. Um, and I will probably do something with the fabric from the cover. Maybe I'll use some of that fabric for the hedgehog. Hey, Beth. Hello. Yeah, Kathy, I'm, so I'm going to keep saving all the conversations with my muse and... Um, yeah, at some point, they're going to be all put together. It ought to be an interesting read. <laughs> if nothing else, it ought to be an interesting read. I'll have to figure out a, a preface or a foreword for it. But yeah, it'll be an interesting read. And I don't hide, you know, stuff from the Muse conversations about you know, how stressed I am or I'm not, I don't hide any of that stuff. You know, if I'm stressed, the muse is stressed. So, you know, I figure it's conversations that you all are having with yourselves so you can relate. Hey Beth, we're making a giant pin cushion because I have found a big box of corsage pins that I need, the box isn't working for me. Okay, so then once you think you have enough stuffing in there, This is why you want to use buttonhole twist or quilting cotton um, because you're going to need to put some force on this. Pull it tight. Yeah, it's all real. I don't, you know... I said to myself a long time ago that if I was going to do this YouTube thing and put myself out there, that I was never going to be one of these people that you met in real life and you thought, wow, she's not the same thing as she is in, um, on, on the internet. That's never going to be me. I am, I am who you see. So now I'm just taking stitches in case the thread does break. Whoops. You want to have lots of extra stitches to hold it. We're going to cover all the mess up. So don't worry about it being neat, ow, neat and clean. I poked myself again. I'm going to get blood on the project. No, I'm just making a big round pincushion. The owl is actually made into triangles. They, he's, I'll show you the pattern for the owl. He's actually made from triangles of fabric. Okay, once you think you have it secured, then tie it off in a knot. And then I always kind of, you know, do this. Now, sometimes I want to make them look like a pumpkin. 
Oh, that's a good tip, Kristen. I do, like, I know you guys probably think I'm kidding. I do keep, I keep tied to ghost sticks in the art room, see? Because <laughs> I'm always getting blood on stuff. <laughs> so I sometimes I try to make them look like a pumpkin, which I'm kind of thinking I might want to do with this one. I've got embroidery floss here. That might be too dark. Ooh, that's a good one. So again, you want to um, get some thicker thread because, oh, that's a good tip too. So you want to get some thicker thread because you're going to be pulling on this. So I would leave like, I don't know, a four or five inch tail in the center and then just literally wrap the thread around and then turn it at the center and wrap it around again. And there goes the little card of floss on the floor. Yep, there it goes. Okay, once you get it wrapped around as many times as you want, cut off your thread. Don't worry right now if your sections aren't like even or anything. Tie it. Without getting your fingers jammed in there because you know, that's not helpful. One more. So then what you can do is push on the fabric and like adjust the fabric folds. what that was it was my phone um and then sometimes what i do with these threads at the bottom is i will take a scrap of the same color thread to keep them all together and neat i'll just tie it like that and then cut that and then go back to adjusting your fabric folds and then you can think about how you want to decorate the top. Now on this one, I put leaves and buttons. I'll get the other one for you in a minute. You could do anything. I'm kind of, I'm kind of feeling a doily. What do you think? This is even bigger than the other one that I made. This is the other one. It just has buttons on the top and see what I did at the bottom. Um, I, I, again, I think this was pieced together and I put this on the bottom because this is open, I think. I think actually, I think this is upside down. So I think this was the top. And what I did is I put a doily on here to cover up, if I remember correctly. I made that a long time ago. have this basket of lace it's such a cute yeah it's a cute little poof and it could be for anything I tend to like I like making pin cushions I don't know what the deal is I just like making pin cushions oh see one of these would be cute on top how cute would that be that's very like shabby chic but that would be cute you guys can't see, there you go. Maybe even layering two of them. Ooh, yep, yeah. okay, I like that. I'm gonna grab the button box while I'm up because I'm gonna need that next, I just know.
Okay. So, all right. So for those who are just joining us, the reason this pin cushion is so big is because I found a box of these huge, gigantic corsage pins. Does anybody remember the days when making stick pins on YouTube were a thing? Um, so yeah, so you need kind of a big pin and there's a lot of them. Nothing like having a meltdown right before hubby has to leave for work. But I hate what he's doing found too late. To... Yeah, you know, and things like that get to me more than they used to. <laughs> and I'm sure it's situational stress. So these are store-bought um, doilies. And the first thing I'm going to do is take the labels off. Yeah, see, stick pins. And the thing is, I have them here in the box. And yes, I may do some more decorative stick, stick pins, and that may be on a future video. I do find, though, for some of the slow stitching projects, especially the really thick, huge, heavy layers of material, that I'm wanting to use a big pin like this. Um, sometimes I just want easy access to the big pins because I'm putting them um, into um, when I'm spooling trims and I'm using the bigger pins to hold the trim to the cord, uh, the chipboard. So having them like this, I'm just going to jab myself and get blood all over the place. I hate grocery shopping before, Aunt Beck, and now it, I really hate it now. And, you know, the fact that it's become our date night going to the grocery store is just funny and sad all at the same time. So I'm just going to cut the thread that's holding these onto the um, doily. Now, these two are fabric labels. So I do think I'm going to save the little label and I'm going to put it in my stash over here off camera of slow stitching stuff. I've got some random bits. Okay, so that's the right side of that one. I think that's the right side of that one. I do think I want to layer them like this. How cute would that be on the top of that with some buttons? Yeah, I hate wasting food, especially because, you know, we... I grew up without not a lot of money. And so, you know, my parents struggled. Oh, that's a perfect, <laughs> that's a perfect button for that. Uh, my parents struggled and they didn't have a lot of money to spare. Certainly not to waste food. Did I haven't bought buttons like very many in years. I did buy these recently because like who could resist that huge gigantic button? Um, but most of these have been inherited buttons. These are mostly, yeah. A lot of these are from my grandmother's stash of things. Boxes. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, you know, I'm finding I really enjoy making my own storage solutions. Is that what I want to call them? And having them be sort of decorative and there's a cute button right there. And breaking out things like this old button box and using, you know, using these things we've got sh jammed in the corner. And I don't know about you guys, but you know, prior to this, I was more want to just go buy something to use for a project than to dig through my stuff and find what I already had, um, which is stupid because I've got this room full of stuff. I'm not calling you stupid. I'm calling me stupid. Yeah, Aunt Beck, I don't necessarily snag them all the time when I find them in the thrift store, but... Um, because I have a lot, that whole bo that box is full. Um, but um, I don't usually buy them new very often unless it's something specific. 
And then, you know, like with a lot of things, I am just, I get tired of driving around to the shops looking for what I, you know, cause I'm usually looking for something specific and I get tired of driving around to the shops and not finding it. So then I just um, order it online. Oh, the big orange one. It would actually be, I, I'm kind of feeling the grain white. Okay, so if you if you secure the center well enough, then when you go to sew the decorations on, it's just a matter of securing the decorations and your stitches don't have to be something that um, is structural. Did that make sense? I don't know why I'm buffering because we have high speed, but I'm guessing it has something to do with the entire planet being on the internet at the same time. So what I'm chalking it up to, because the computer that's doing the broadcasting is on Ethernet. It's not even on Wi-Fi, so it's on dedicated Ethernet. So I'm just making little tiny stitches around the edge of the doily to secure it to the poof. I like that word, poof. That's a good word. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm seeing the buffering on the iPad too. Now, that being said, the iPad is on Wi-Fi. So my guess it is it has something to do with the Wi-Fi devices, but not the actual broadcast. Um, because the broadcasting computer, again, is on Ethernet. But I'm seeing what you guys are seeing on the mobile devices because my iPad is buffering at the same time generally that your device is. Again, it's because the entire world is on the internet and Wi-Fi at the same time. Yeah, the ethernet's a lot more stable. And when I broadcast, that's why I do it this way. And I look at the chat on the iPad because we're broadcasting with the ethernet, which is very stable. And we had to increase our speed when the kids were living here because literally I was trying to do YouTube and all the other three were all literally all working at the same time on the computers. And, um, yeah, it was, it, we didn't have enough of a connection. People kept bumping other people out of conversations. So <laughs> when you're working, that's not a good thing. So, um, so we increased our, um, speed and now that they're not living here, it's been great. We haven't reduced it because we like the high speed. But the Wi-Fi is iffy. So I just tied a knot right here. And I did it on the top. But again, I'm going to run the thread up underneath and out the other side. And while the knot is there, it's kind of hidden by the texture of the doily. So I have... Um, I have the circles, the ovals, hearts. Flowers. I don't have the butterfly one. That's one I don't have. And I am planning a Frida Kahlo slow stitch. I would love to add butterflies that one when I do it. That's a future project we'll be working on. So I'm doing it this way. So again, so we can hide that knot. You could totally do these as little pillows, table decorations, like this. You don't have to do this kind of thing and have it be a pin cushion. 
Um, you know, it can be cute and decorative, but be something that you made out of things that you had. You know, how many of us have stashes of, you know, fabric and fat quarters that we intended to do journal covers and stuff with that we never got made. And, um, you know, old garment projects that never, I still have a piece of silk I intended to make myself a dress out of, and I never did. And that was like 20 years ago. I think I'm not making the dress now. And if I did, I bet you it wouldn't fit. So <laughs> I'm thinking that silk is going to have to end up being something else. And rather than having this stuff just be in a box in a closet or on a shelf, one thing that this pandemic has taught me is to use what I have. And if I have things that I know I'm not going to use that don't make me happy, they need to go on to a home where they are going to get used and they are going to make someone else happy. That's why I started doing the purge boxes. Now, I will tell you that I wasn't doing the purge boxes for a while before the pandemic because there was a women's shelter that I was giving things to. But now it's hard to get over there. It's hard to get somebody that will accept decorations or donations. And um, it's easier to just do the purge boxes, to be honest with you. And it's nice to have a little bit of income. Because, you know, YouTube doesn't make me any money. We're almost done, but I don't think I have enough thread to get all the way to the back to the end. So the one thing that um, a lot of beginner sewers mistake they make is they cut their thread really long. And then it gets tangled when you're stitching. So it's kind of almost better to cut your thread shorter and have to put some knots. than it is to have to deal with tangled thread. I could break out the beeswax. It's not like it's far away. It's like right next to me. Okay. You know what? I'm going to just tuck that. Well, These threads are going to make me crazy. I did do a series of these little sort of pumpkin-y shapes with leaves on the top out of different kind of fall colored fabrics. And they are my table decorations. Um, I did them the same way. So I, I did too many stitches. And my needle is really big, uh, long, seriously. It's not gonna cooperate because it knows I'm on camera. There we go. Ha, perfect. Give it a little tug, give it a little snip. Yeah, I started ordering some of those yo-yo makers, but I didn't, um, of course, didn't get all of them because they're hard to find and expensive now. I wish I hadn't gotten rid of them in the first place. When I am doing purging, I don't often purge tools because I usually think about it really a lot before I do the purge of a tool because I found that there's been a few times like with the yo-yo makers where, fun fact, I used to own them all. And I purged them because I thought I wasn't going to use them. And then I started slow stitching and I was like, crap, I really wish I had those yo-yo makers. And I have used them since I bought them. Okay, so now instead of cutting this thread, we're going to take this last stitch. I'm going to line up this doily. So this, if I just did this Battenberg lace doily, you'd still kind of see the messy stitches in the center of the poof. But if I put this one, it almost completely hides it. So I'm going to run this needle up to the edge of that. There we go. We'll do the same thing 
to this doily. We don't necessarily need to worry about going all the way into the poof as long as we catch it in the Battenberg lace. Yeah, you totally could. I agree, Linda, I agree. You totally could do this as a shabby chic pumpkin. And I did a whole series of actually small ones. They're a little bit smaller than this one. Um, this same way, this way that I just showed you how to do this one. Um, and there I did them in um, fall colors. And of course, um, if you've been watching me for a while, teal. I added some um, teal. So I did pumpkin and teal, little mini pumpkins for um, our table for fall. Not that any of us are doing anything for fall this year and having family over. It's probably just going to be whoever lives in your house, <laughs> unfortunately, but you know. Um, I got the, for the stems, I usually buy um, from the floral department. They have the, what is it, raffia covered wire, like the bendable raffia. I usually buy that for the stems. So there's a, there's a butterfly, there's a clover, which I have, I think the large and small clover. There's hearts, there's circles, there's a lot of them. They don't make them anymore. So the only way to get them is to thrift for them, eBay them. You can get them on Etsy, but they charge a lot of money on Etsy. So I'll tell you a secret about making things like this poof. I have a bag of stuffing in the closet. That little bag I showed earlier is just the one that's on the table. And I do like using the regular stuffing um, for making things like the zombie dolls. Um, and when I'm making the little teddy bears, which I have to, I never finished my teddy bear project. And so now I don't know if I can donate them to the local hospital, but anyway, I'm going to still make the bears. Um, when I'm making like something more like that, like a doll project, I usually, with the exception of that rag doll, like using stuffing. But for something like this, I like to use what I have and use something else or use stuffing and some of the cabbage and some other things. So hold on, I'll get mine. I'll get one of them. I even have an oval. So let me get a bigger one that's going to actually like show up on camera. This is the jumbo circle. It's a makes a huge gigantic yo-yo. So it's just sort of a, a device. You cut your fabric to fit in here and then you snap this in, which of course now I'm on camera. I don't want to snap in because, you know, <laughs> anyway, this snaps in with the fabric sandwiched between the two pieces of plastic, then you can actually literally stitch through here following the directions, which is actually very easy. And it has a starting point and an ending point. And the way you stitch it, when you're done and you pull it tight, you pull it, you can pull it out of here. It doesn't stick to the plastic and you have a perfect yo-yo that you can then pull. This, this helps you just neatly gather the edges and turn it in without having to like bother pressing it and everything. I know this is a huge one, which I'm not sure why I had to have, but I had to have it. See, there is a flower one, and this template will make a flower this size. And it's just an easier way rather than fussing with turning it and stitching it in the right place and then pulling it. Once you get it out of here, you just pull it taut and you fluff it a little bit, tie the knot, and you're done. Yeah, we can try that. I don't know if we'll do it today, maybe next week. We can make yo-yos. The trick is in the stitching. And if you stitch it right, 
then you get all the stitching done while it's in the template. And then you just take the two, two pieces of plastic off and you pull your threads tight and you have a finished yo-yo. Give it a little fluff, tie knot, and you're good. It's much quicker than making them the other way. Okay, so I'm gonna run this needle up to the middle. Okay, let's get our buttons. Yeah, I um, did purchase some yo-yos I had that I had bought that somebody else made that were um, not fabrics I would probably ever use. I'd had them for a long time. They were in a recent purge box. And, um, but I love yo-yos. So again, we've already secured the poof with our other stitches. So I don't need to worry about these buttons um, like being structural because they're not gonna be. So the only trick to this is the bottom button only has two holes and the upper button has four holes. So that's a little tricky, but we can get it. Now, if I was doing this as a garment buttonhole, then I'd want to wrap the thread around a few times because you'd want to like create a little bit of a thread shank um, to not put strain on the fabric when you button your garment. But for this, we don't care. So I'm gonna do this, take a stitch. Um, thread's kind of short. I think we're gonna have to do this again and actually I'm going to wrap it around and tie the knot on the other side just to be sure that it catches and doesn't go anywhere You know, it's my speed too, Barbara. And other than when I'm on camera here for you all, um, I really just enjoy, um, I turn the music up and I get the fabric and the needle and thread out and I just start stitching. How cute is that? So then it's just a matter of Sometimes they're so pretty, it's almost a shame to poke holes in it with the pins. <laughs> so just so you all know, if, if you're kind of feeling cringing while I'm poking holes in it, yeah, you're not alone. And again, I just, I enjoy making my own pincushions. I, you know, other than the bird, I think the bird is the last one I bought. And I bought that bird like 10 years ago. Yeah, next week, if you guys want to do things like we can, I can show you the, um, how to make yo-yos. How long have we been on? Oh, a couple hours. I can show you next week how to make yo-yos and we can um, maybe work on a hedgehog. There are some days right now, especially where my muse doesn't want to be bothered with paint and she just wants to play with her thread and her stitches, probably in part because it reminds her of happier times, but I'm okay with that. And I, I just do this and I just keep going around and around until I get all the pins in there. 
yeah, so the um, little making the little animals is fun. Like with the owl, I don't use, usually end up putting pins in it. I could, but she's just cute. And there's some of these channels out there, and I think some of them are Japanese channels. I'm not sure. Maybe Korean. I, I don't know. It doesn't matter. They're not English-speaking channels. Sometimes they'll have the um, – oh, that one's totally – not got a tip on it. Okay, so that goes garbage. Um, sometimes they're Russian channels, and I honestly, I just turn the sound off because I don't understand what they're saying anyway. I have trouble with English. And um, I just watch the video, and that's how I figured out how to do the um, ragdoll. Thank you. Everybody have a great day. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, support your free content on Facebook and YouTube with all your favorite creatives, not just me. Most of us have a way. It's usually in the video description. And um, I know everybody is struggling right now, and they would certainly appreciate your support um, here on YouTube and in the Facebook art groups. Um, so see if you can do that. And um, I will probably be putting some scrap bags up on you, um, Etsy again soon because I've got this little box of scraps. It's kind of making me crazy. Um, yeah, so if you're part of one of my Facebook groups, either My Creative Year or Life of Art and Self-Expression, when I'm going to go live, I try to announce it there. Today, I also announced it to my personal Facebook page, but that is not something I normally do. So if you want to know when I'm going live, it's good to be in one or both of the Facebook groups. Um, I also just keep an eye on my subscription list on YouTube. And usually when somebody I'm subscribed to is going live, it shows up there. And uh, yeah, just go out and stay safe, stay creative, stay healthy. Do something good for yourself because you deserve it. Like make yourself a big poof. How cute is that? I'll get all these pins stuffed in here and I'll be posting a picture of it later to social media later tonight. So you guys can see with all the pins in it. Maybe I'll put it up in the windowsill too and take a picture in the windowsill uh, with the other, with its poofy friends. <laughs> How funny is that? Poofy friends. If you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can leave them here on YouTube on the recording of the video. Um, you can always DM me over um, in Facebook um, or post a comment somewhere and tag me in it. Um, I'd love to have that conversation. And, you know, if we need to talk more when we do these lives about, you know, art, using art to help us get through, um, I, I'm all for that. That's all part of who I am. I'm not afraid of the heart conversations, um, but um, I do find that I, for one, need to need to talk about it, but I also need to do art. So you all are welcome. Probably going to just like forget to sign off because I'm too busy sticking pins in. There's something therapeutic about this. <laughs> It might be a little too much like sticking pins in a voodoo doll. <laughs> I'm just saying that. Just putting it out there. <laughs> and if you think I have a shortage of pins. <laughs> okay. And I've got one more of these in the windowsill <laughs> that has decorative stick pins in it. <laughs> oh, and my favorite pins to decorative pins, like fancy pins hijab pins. Is that how you say that? I don't think that's how you say it. I'm pretty sure I'm butchering the name. Um, you know, the head covering pins that they used to cover to attach, to wrap themselves in their hijab. Um, they have some beautiful pins out there. I just um, find them on Amazon and I order them. I'd love to find a local shop that maybe is still open that carries that kind of stuff. They make beautiful stick pins.
These are corsage pins, just FYI, for those that don't know. That's why they're so big. But if you're going to do decorative stick pins, you need these big giant pins. And maybe that's something you want to do in a future video. We can do decorative stick pins and we can do um, yo-yos. We can make a little hedgehog. Yeah, I have a thing for pins. Pins and sewing needles. Sharp pointy things. I don't know what that says about me. Probably nothing good. All right, I'm gonna finish sticking the pins in here off the of camera and um, I hope you all have a great day. And again, if you need me or you have any questions, comments or concerns, you can um, tag me in a post in the Facebook groups. You can also DM me over in Facebook. Um, there is a way to private message me, I think here via YouTube, or at least there used to be. I don't know if you still can do that, but my email address is in the description of every video. So you can always find me there. All right, guys, that's it. I will talk to you later. Bye.